Technology, located in southwest Ohio, offers over 25 advanced skill and technical training courses lasting from one to four weeks each. Other services available include in-plant and specialized training. For more information, write or call area code 513-332-5000. Hobart School of Welding Technology presents Training in Gas Tungsten Arc Welding Topic number one Lecture Discussion Introduction to Gas Tungsten Arc Welding Objective To provide a general orientation to the method of operation the type of equipment and the applications of the gas tungsten arc welding process the gas tungsten arc welding process is a gas shielded process which uses the intense heat of an electric arc between a non-consumable tungsten electrode and the base metal to be welded. An inert gas or a mixture of gases shield the arc from the atmosphere. The gas protects the weld from harmful oxygen and nitrogen in the air. Filler metal may or may not be used depending on the application. On light gauge metals, filler metal is sometimes not required to produce the weld. The arc melts the base metals together to form the final weld deposit. When filler metal is required, the procedure is similar to oxyacetylene welding. The torch is held in one hand and the other hand controls the filler rod as the heat from the arc fuses the filler metal into the base metals. The equipment needed for this process includes a power source, a torch with electrical cables, a shielding gas supply, a cooling water supply, and a foot pedal control. The power source is of the constant current type and should provide either alternating or direct current as required for the metal being welded. The constant current power supply has a drooping volt ampere curve. The voltage level is determined by the arc length held by the welder. When the welder increases the arc length, the voltage increases a certain amount. And characteristic of constant current power sources, the current level decreases a small amount. Since the current level fluctuates only small amounts for changes in arc length, the power source is said to maintain constant current. A typical gas tungsten arc machine operates within a range of 5 to 300 amps, 10 to 35 volts, at a 60% rated duty cycle. The shielding gas supply is stored in high pressure cylinders and is delivered through a pressure regulator, flow meter, valve, and hoses. In high volume applications, the shielding gas may be stored in a bulk storage tank. The shielding gas is then piped to a number of separate welding stations. At the stations, the shielding gas is delivered to the torch through a flow meter, valves, and hoses. The shielding gases used with the gas tungsten arc process are normally inert. Now this means that the gas cannot combine chemically with other elements to form compounds. Argon, helium, or a mixture of the two gases is used. Argon is more popular since it is less expensive. The torches for gas tungsten arc welding can be either air-cooled or water-cooled. Air-cooled torches are normally used in applications where lower amperage levels are required. The handle of the torch provides passages for the shielding gas and the electrical power. Water-cooled torches are similar to the air-cooled, except that additional passages are required within the torch 
to transport the coolant. Now these torches are normally used in higher amperage applications in the range from 200 to 650 amperes. The body of the torch contains the collet and the collet body for holding the tungsten electrode. The torch also provides a means for mounting the gas nozzle and the electrode protective cap. Nozzles can be made of ceramic, metal, or glass. The ceramic types are the most common. The electrode itself is either tungsten or a tungsten alloy with an approximate melting point of 6,170 degrees Fahrenheit. Pure tungsten electrodes are the least expensive and are commonly used to weld aluminum or magnesium. These electrodes are identified by a green band. Tungstens alloyed with zirconia are used on similar metals. These electrodes are more expensive, but they have a higher current carrying capacity. A brown band is used for identification. Electrodes alloyed with 1% or 2% thoria are commonly used on ferrous metals such as steel or stainless steel. These electrodes provide a high current carrying capacity, have a longer life, and less tip contamination. The 1% has a yellow band, while the 2% has a red band. The collet size and the collet body size should match the size of the electrode. A foot rheostat is commonly used with gas tungsten arc welding equipment. The foot control acts as an on-off switch to start the arc. When equipped with a rheostat, the foot pedal enables a welder to vary the current level during welding. The gas tungsten arc process is normally applied manually. That is, the welder maintains the arc, feeds filler metal, provides travel along the joint, and tracks the joint. Another common method of operation is fully automatic. The torch and filler metal are controlled mechanically, and the welder's job is to monitor the operation. The gas tungsten arc process can be used to produce top quality welds on almost all metals, including aluminum, magnesium, carbon steel, stainless steel, copper, nickel, and other metals. The type of base metal will determine the type of current to be used. Alternating current is used mainly for welding aluminum and magnesium. Direct current is commonly used for steels, stainless steel, coppers, and nickels. Since filler metal does not cross the arc, there is no spatter. As with all gas shielded welding, the welding area is clearly visible and cleaning of the bead is minimal as compared to other welding processes. The degree of skill required with the process is somewhat high since it is necessary to feed filler metal into the puddle and a short arc length must be maintained. The process is especially useful for welding thin materials and for depositing root pass welds on pipe and tube joints. In this course, we will be welding thin, mild steel, stainless steel, and aluminum plate in various welding positions and joint configurations. Once the process is mastered, it can provide high quality welds on most commercial metals.